Hi, everybody. Welcome back to the Little Green Pasture. This is a special episode today. I hope I can get through it without crying. I'll do my best. I would like to begin by um, starting, I think, with a prayer, which is proper. So will you bow your heads with me? Thank you. Father in heaven, it's with tenderness of heart I come before you today. With even a somber spirit. Even with a heavy heart. And yet at the same time, Jesus, I, I thank you. I'm here, Lord Jesus, to talk about something very, very important. Oh, Jesus, be with my heart and my mouth. How hard is it to talk about certain things and, and to express myself about spiritual things and a life? Help me, Lord. Help me to express myself, to be fully myself, open, and let your living waters, Lord Jesus, be mingled through the words that I speak. And let every heart be attentive to your voice. Let every eye be cast upward to where you are. And that Jesus, this won't just be a word and a message and a thing said, Lord, that will be only pondered on for a couple of hours after hearing it, but that Jesus, you, you, Jesus, will impress upon my heart as you already have and upon the hearts and hearers of everyone that will hear this very special message. As you know, Jesus, I am only human. I'm only a broken vessel. Speak through me. Animate your own words. I will follow you. In Jesus' name, amen. So it is with sadness of heart that I would like to announce to you, not really like it, but announce to you that our dear brother in the Lord, Fred Tomlinson, has gone home to be with the Lord. I received notice of this yesterday morning. I just couldn't believe my eyes. I thought, am I reading this right? Fred Tomlinson's best friend, Peter Boyle, reached out to me and many, many of you who have been part of the McKenzie Fellowship. And I was one of them. And I was really in shock. And I cried. And then I cried some more. And then I cried this morning. And I had a busy day yesterday and I was doing things like I normally do, but in it, I was doing outward things, but in my heart, my heart was there. And hmm, isn't it times like these, I just want to express myself because I really prayed about this message today. You know, Fred was my friend. He was a good friend to me. And sorry he was but i'm not going to be like this through the whole message okay but he was a good friend to you many of you much longer than me i've only had the privilege of knowing him just this last year and it was wonderful you know a good friend of mine sent me a link to his message and i felt like i hit a gold vein I mean, I've been around, I've been a, an on hands, active believer, a true studier, a child of God, just like you. And when I first heard Fred, I was like, I can't believe I struck the gold. Please understand. I know that if Fred could hear me right now, he'd be laughing and going, oh, please, Joni. <laughs> Because those of you who know Fred, he was so humble. He'd be like, please. <laughs> but I'm going to express myself. I will make no apologies for it. 
because I do so in the depths of love, in my heart of love for him. And it's good to talk about those that we loved who went ahead. Especially certain people who, like Fred, I know Fred would say, I'm like everybody else. And he really was. He was um, easily approachable. You could say whatever you want. Um, he understood deeply what you meant when you said anything to him. Um, his testimony was powerful. You knew that in um, verbal conversation, and as I personally got to know him, as many of you knew him and knew him a lot more than me and longer than me, um, that Fred just does just you, you could say anything to him and you knew he was listening to you, but not just listening to you. He was listening to what you said through the ears of the Holy Spirit. And and he was so special. And, you know, he really was a master of our time. And many of us sat there listening to him. And I remember the first time I listened to him, every day I listened to like two sermons a day. He had just started his YouTube channel and he only had like a few he had posted. Yes, he had other uh, messages, way many more messages, but that he had just started his YouTube channel. So I started listening to it. I was so thirsty. And one day I reached out to him and I was like, oh no, I want to invite him on the little green pasture. And I remember feeling so nervous when I did because I so regarded him that I was okay. I was already going, I prayed about it and I was like, hey, Lord, and if he says no, I fully understand why he wouldn't want to be here with this. But he was so nice and so gracious. He said, yes, I couldn't believe it. And after that, I was so happy to help him, you know, and you know, just help him along with his YouTube channel. And I hope you don't take it that I'm putting myself in the middle of anything. I know I'm nothing and way less than nothing, but I had the privilege and the opportunity to just be a colleague, a friend and help him with his YouTube channel. And I remember teaching him how to do all of the artwork and, and he was so smart. I was like, he was smarter than me. Like stuff that took me a while to learn. He was going like this with it. And same with Peter. So anyways, um, with that being said, um, he finished his race. He finished his race. And what does that mean for us? When we look at a man like Fred, Fred really stood out to me anyway, I'm sure to you. As somebody, a teacher of our generation, somebody that stood out, that had a different sound, you knew that this was a man who knew Jesus Christ. I encourage you guys to listen to his uh, messages and um, listen to his testimony and where he came from and what he believed and how he truly received Christ and how he spent his whole life in a continual, consistent race, growing, ever increasing into godliness. How he spent his whole life. I mean, he was preaching in the 60s. I was born in 62 and he was fully preaching back then in 1964. I think that was the year. But, you know, as I sat and I pondered over his life, some fire came into me and I said, oh, God, I said, yes, I miss him. I'm going to always miss him. But what I knew of him was somebody that was way up the road from me. And isn't that what torch bearers do? Because I look at Fred as passing the torch to you and me. Yes, we will ever have his YouTube channel, his messages on, um, there's another, I think, Christian sermon audio, something like that. We could always listen to that. And I will, and I'll always listen to him. But what I want to talk about today is his race. 
and I want to talk about it and I want to weave your race into it. And you know, isn't it true when somebody that we love so much is called home? It's like all of a sudden everything around us stops. Everything that we think is so important, we got to race here, we got to go do this, we got to go do that. All of a sudden, everything just has no meaning. That's how I feel. Like all of a sudden, I thought nothing matters but Jesus Christ. Things will take care of themselves, things will answer for themselves. And all of a sudden, we're directed upward, really. Oh, yes, we're in our devotions daily. We're praying all the time. But when a dear brother or sister goes home to be with the Lord, that makes me look that way. And it all of a sudden just rips my soul open. And I'm not asking God to do something. I'm not, I'm not all of a sudden doing anything. I'm in, I just, I stop and I realize my mortality and the immortality and the mortal putting on the immortal the corruptible putting on incorruption see fred passed away but he left behind a memorial you know in proverbs i think it's proverbs uh 14 verse 5 it says that the memory of the righteous is blessed but the name of the wicked shall rot. Fred Tomlinson is a person I will never forget, whose race I looked into, I listened, because the character of a person and what they were in life speaks at the end. What you are is not finished yet. What you will be at the end, your final words, the final things you're saying, your character, your actions, how you express yourself, your motives, all of that is in there comprised into your being speaks. The end speaks. You know, there's the scripture and we're all familiar with it. Paul's letter to Timothy when he was sitting in prison, most likely being executed the following day. And his last words to him are so much more potent. Not that everything and anything Paul, the apostle ever said, was not potent. He was busy. We read here so much. He was teaching in his life and sowing and building churches and, and taking dramatic attacks from Satan. But you know, his final words were, I am ready to be offered from 1 Timothy chapter 4, 6 through 8. Second, uh, I believe it's 2 Timothy. Yes, let me correct that right here. 2 Timothy, where he says, for I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the righteous Lord shall give me, and not unto me only, but unto all them. And to all, it says, and not to me only, but unto all them that also love his appearing. You know, Fred was a teacher. Fred's life consisted in the very fabric of the very, very life and very real living existence of the person of Jesus Christ, not a religious man. He wasn't a religious man. He was a man that walked with God every day. He, he was a man that was always looking to the Lord. Do you know how it talks about Moses' face when he went up to Mount Sinai 
And he came down at one point, it says his face shone that he had to put a veil over it when he spoke to the people. And then when he spoke to God, he took it off. But in essence is what I'm saying. Fred always had that shining, eternal, heavenly light on his face. We saw that. See, when a person that we see is a true teacher, they're filled with the Holy Spirit. It's not that we're putting them on a pedestal. Fred would never allow it. And if you're truly, truly, really living for Christ, you would say the same thing about yourself. I said to Jesus when in tears, I said, Lord, I pray I become... Even, even if it's less than half of what Fred was, let me be that in my life. And something entered into my heart where I just said, and my heart began to become so fiery. And all day long yesterday, thinking about him, that he finished his course, he kept the faith. He fought a good fight. And he knew who his enemy was, Satan. He knew how to stand and he, 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 as an older elder brother was saying, this is the way, follow me. Just like Paul said, follow me. And even at some time yesterday, I read even in third, second Thessalonians where he, where he said, follow us. So Paul didn't just say, follow me. He said, follow us. And in the same way, a good teacher says, follow me. This is how you do it. And, you know, he really cut through things. He really knew how to just cut through things and say it like it is. But there was a finesse in him because he was so, oh, I don't want to say the word polished in the Lord. He just knew Christ. He knew how to get to the center of things. And you know why? Because he walked with God. He knew how to fight a good fight. He knew and he got to a point where he finished his course. Fred didn't know. It was, he, the Lord chose a moment that he would be called home, that he would be summoned home. And right now where Fred is, is in a, in heaven where all of us are going. And you know what? Yesterday, my heart was just so pumping. I just, Yes, I was doing all these things I had to take care of, but inside, like on the outside, I was getting this done, doing that, going here, going there. But my heart was throbbing inside of my chest. And I said, Lord, I said, what is this life? Am I going to be busy all the time? Yes, there's things I have to do. I said, but God, all of a sudden, I said, I just want more of you, God. I said, it's not going to be found in reading volumes of books. It's not going to be found in extra reading of more material. And in my mind, all of a sudden, I started thinking, Lord, how can I find you? And the words of Job came into my heart when Job cried out, Lord, oh, that I may know. I would, I, it, only that I would know where your throne is, that I may come to you, that I may approach unto you. See, my heart burned like that. And all of a sudden, that burning heart of mine just burned away everything. Everything that was not eternal. That was just consistent with the earthly mortal life. See, Fred lived for the eternal Fred, even five days ago, put out a video. Five days ago, when I saw that, I always got a smile on my face because every time I see a video he puts out, I remember teaching him how to do the artwork. And he was so good at it. So every time I see it, I just get a little chuckle in my heart, you know. And I'm so, I was so proud of him. I'm like, look at him go. Look at him go. He was so sharp and smart and deep and kind. But you know what? If Fred was here right now, he would start laughing and say, oh, well, not always. And you know, 
He was deeply loved. He's still deeply loved. We love them that have gone ahead. I think of Well, let, let me just backtrack a little. When I was really thinking yesterday about how much I wanted God and those fiery words in my heart, oh, that I knew where his throne is, that I might go to him. And all of a sudden I felt myself in my spirit looking this way horizontally. Maybe I could read, maybe this, maybe that. All of a sudden, I felt the Holy Spirit strongly speak to my heart. And he said, I truly, I'm telling you right now, I heard the Holy Spirit speak to me. And he said, you're looking in the wrong direction. You need to look that way, where I am. That's where you'll find me. You see, I understood where to seek him even more yesterday than ever before in my life. Because you see, Fred went there. And isn't it true when we lose someone that love Christ and they go to heaven, it makes us look there. Because we know they're there. And we want to go to them. Let me share something about myself. There have been times in my life that there were certain individuals that were much older than me, that were the Fred types. And they went home to be with the Lord. And there was a period of mourning and sorrow with, of course, knowing where they were and that they were not sorrowing. But I missed them so much. And I felt, as C.S. Lewis said, when his wife Helen Joy died, Afterwards, he said, her absence is like the sky spread out all over everything. He said that he felt slightly concussed. He said that even the little blackberries that grew outside of his window, where he would sit and drink tea and look out at them, he said everything looked dull and flat. And I felt like that, and that's how it feels. I love those words to express human loss. And I thought, and so yesterday, you know, and even today, like I cried this morning, but something back then and even before then and today entered into my heart. I said, yes, God, he is home with you now. I said, but I'm still here. And you know what? So are you. And Fred left us an example to follow. You know why? He followed Paul's example. Because he followed Christ's example. And oh, how he loved John and Charles Wesley. He followed their example. And you know why? Because John and Charles Wesley followed Christ's example. You know, I listened to Fred's last sermon, and I will quote what he said that was so poignant to me. And this is from November 15th, titled Spiritual Struggles. He said, quote, but I want you to listen for a moment to the truth. Perhaps we need to be reminded that Satan doesn't possess the last word and he shall never ever have the last word. Hallelujah. Jesus had the last word. He had it. Remember when he was on the cross, when he said, finished. What a wonderful word finished. And as Charles Wesley added to that word, he said, the great redeeming work was done. Accomplished is the sacrifice. 
glory to God. Jesus accomplished something on the cross that was dynamic in the ultimate sense, far, far beyond any of the efforts and struggles and frustrations and pains and wounds and everything. He did something. I understand that primarily, supremely, it was to provide salvation for our souls. But his work was a comprehensive work, an all-inclusive work. It was a dynamic work. Finished. What an appropriate way to say goodbye to us from the cross. Those words, finished. It said he cried with a loud voice. Jesus did. And I can just see Fred right now running up and down the streets of that city. Finished. Finished. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Finished. And you know what else I believe? I believe this. That if I were to run by this, by this to Fred, he would say, yes, I think he would. I can't be certain. I'm not saying he would. But I felt in my heart that if he were knowing he was going, that these would be his words and his own charge to us as his children. Second Timothy 4, chapter 1 through 9. I charge thee, therefore, before God and the Lord Jesus Christ, who shall judge the quick and the dead at his appearing and his kingdom. Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season, reprove, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come will they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lusts shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears, and they shall turn them from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. But watch. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered, and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day, and not to me only, but unto all them that love his appearing. Do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. I think Fred, just like Jesus gave instructions on the mountain to his disciples before he went up into heaven, I believe these are the same last instructions that Fred would leave with you and me. Maybe we can take these words today and apply them to our hearts and meditate upon them and walk in them to honor our God and our King as Fred has gone ahead and he has passed the, passed the torch to you. He's passed the torch to me. And let us work in these words to pass the torch unto others so that when the time of our departure is at hand and we have fought a good fight and we have finished our course and we have kept the faith and we can tell people that the Lord has a crown of righteousness for me also for you that's the passing of the torch I don't know about you guys but his life impacted mine so much and his leaving has impacted me so much it has changed me forever and now I feel so much more directed to heaven to look there 
and not look this way horizontally ever again to find Christ. But I will be a praying woman. I will seek my meat from God. Seek, seek the Lord. When he says, do thy diligence to come shortly unto me, I can almost hear Fred saying, and do thy diligence to come shortly unto me. And we will see him shortly, won't we? The last words of his video, he spoke about Jeremiah 31, 3, and emphasized his word, the Lord hath appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. And he spoke of the love of God, and he preached the gospel, and he preached that. And isn't that what your life and mine is for? Satan, like he said, does not possess the last word of your life. He spoke about people that are bound in addiction, bound with all kinds of things. He said, but Christ is your victory. Christ is your victory. Christ will have the last word. Jesus had the last word in the face of Satan when it came to Fred. And now let us take that torch and let us run our race and let us fight not beating the air. Let's keep our body under and let's run our race. He said, it's a good fight. It's not just a fight. It's a good fight. And like he told Timothy in chapter three, that you war a good war, a good warfare. It was my privilege to be here today. My privilege to know him. My privilege to know you. Now let's focus there, not here. This world has a cancer that's eating itself up and soon we will be delivered from it. And what manner of persons ought we to be? But let us be as our master Jesus and follow the example of Fred Tomlinson, whom we shall see soon. I love you, Fred. I will see you soon. We love you, Fred. We honor you and your name today and evermore, world without end. God bless you, you guys. The Lord bless you. Now run your race and run it well because a great entrance will be ministered unto you by Jesus Christ himself on that day. When you enter in, to the innumerable company of angels and the spirits of just men made perfect. God bless you.